presentation. Our next presentation is by Noah's Hassan Mustafi, talking more generally about advancing Noah's mission, the support of AR. As everyone knows, Noah's come early to the game and has a great story to tell. Hello, everyone. My name is Hassan Mustafi, and my colleague Greg Dosik from the same agency, the National Ocean and Atmospheric Administration. We are pleased here today to share with you um, how we are advancing AI in support of our organization or our agency mission. This is our outline. The first slides, we're going to talk about uh, the big data, the NOAA big data, then the NOAA strategies, and uh, then we focus on AI strategic planning. And um, I'll be sharing with you a few examples of AI implementation um, uh, with NOAA data, and then uh, to open a few questions to the audience or some discussion for the audience. And then uh, I, will, uh, I, will, I will end with some announcement. So talking about the NOAA data or NOAA big data, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing how much data has been collected. Um, instruments are at work daily gathering ocean data from current speed to the movement of schools of fish and much more from acoustic, uh, fisheries acoustic or uh, side scan, side scan, sonar, multi-beam uh, instruments as well as um, audio, or video, and from different platform, Anchorage or crude, um, crude um, platforms, satellite. It's about, about 20 terabyte of data collected daily. Of course, this represents a new frontier for understanding or opening the end noun of the oceans, but also generating a larger volume of data that can be can can overwhelm traditional data handling and visualization method. There is a need for more efficient processing of these novel data streams and needs for high performing computing communication. In this slide I put few a couple uh, maps there. The first the top one is the Integrated Ocean Observing System or Environmental Sensor Map. Uh, this is basically representing all the uh, all the sensors that are active within US and and other parts of the world. Uh, you can see there is some inland ones there, and then also um, because we are partnering with other agencies um, and representing their. Uh, their data in there too, their sensors. The, the map, uh, certainly this is very interesting to explore. Uh, I, I would suggest just Google, I use environmental sensor map, you should be able to get there. And uh, the, the, the bottom one is representing the, uh, the sensor, I mean the assets, observing assets there. Uh, there is some lines you can see in the left in the west coast, those are gliders or anchored, uh, you know, vehicles um, doing those surveys. And, uh, and then the overlap on uh, a global uh, current model. So talking about the big data, um, we, we have been talking about big data for a while now. I think we are coming to uh, uh, coming to an end as the focus um, shifts from how we collect data to processing data in real time. Big data is now a business asset supporting the next eras of multi-cloud support, machine learning, and real-time analytics. In other words, we are moving to emerging uh, era uh, of AI or artificial intelligence. That's why we are here today to um, talk about. So um, I'm sure agencies around the world are also uh, trying to figure out how to um, deal with emerging technologies and, uh, and NOAA is also doing the same thing. 
and here we we are showing a six NOAA strategies that 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 were released last year um, early last year the NOAA cloud strategy the NOAA data strategy and crude system strategy NOAA citizen science strategy the omics or eDNA genetics strategy and finally the NOAA artificial intelligence strategy all of all of it is in, uh, in the Science Council website if you are interested to explore them more in detail. Talking about the NOAA AI strategy that is dramatically expanding the application of AI in every NOAA mission area by improving the efficiency, effectiveness, and coordination of AI development and usage across the agency. Um, as, I, as I said, it was released early last year and it's available uh, in, the, in the Science Council website. The NOAA AI strategic plan, um, basically this is um, making that strategy uh, or moving transition that strategy to actions. And um, this is the strategic plan for 2021, 2025. Um, it, it identifies specific actions with leads and target completion dates, and also synergy, syner synergies between uh, or with other uh, strategies that I, I mentioned to you in the previous slide. Uh, this one was released early uh, this year, and it's also available on the Science Council website. Uh, you have a link there in the bottom of this slide. So let's move to the goals of this strategy, uh, the strategic planning. The goal one is to establish a NOAA Center for AI, enable coordination of AI research, algorithm development, data acquisition, applications, information exchange, and awareness. Other functions would be um, maintaining the portal and open source of government application, hosting training event and workshops, and facilitate new partnership. And of course, leveraging across strategies, especially the data and the cloud uh, strategies. Second goal uh, is to fuel the research and development component of advancing AI uh, and uh, assess gaps for AI expertise and asset, uh, asset across uh, our agency, and then identify solutions to fill the gaps, uh, prioritize AI-based approaches and support NOAA um, uh, research grants and, if, uh, and federal uh, funding opportunities and uh, other form of grants. Uh, establish an annual research and development prize competition uh, and uh, and finally, improve algorithms and evaluate model performance. Goal three is basically transition uh, those R&D uh, project into operations uh, or operational capabilities. And you can see on the left side there, we use uh, a readiness level to uh, move uh, uh, from o, o to R and from R to O. Strengthen and expand AI partnership, as I mentioned earlier in my, in my, in my, my first slides, is that partnership is a key and collaboration uh, between um, different partners uh, is a key to advance AI. We are partnering with academia with private, with um, and private um, sector um, such as Google, Microsoft, uh, Nvidia, Amazon, and others. Then the last one is uh, compete uh, and assessment of training needs, and create an online AI learning and support center. Basically, this is. Um, to promote AI proficiency in the workforce through our 
internally or and externally to different program that we have with academia partnering with academia Advan advanced of course education programs uh, to address AI needs then my next slides is more about uh, showing you or sharing with you the, uh, some applications uh, that we we have for different type of data uh, that we collect in our agency. This one is to address the, the, uh, the, the need for climate predictions um, and uses an unsupervised learning to detect different regimes in the model dynamics. Um, it's a neural network that, uh, that, that classify regimes through training with surface data from a climate model or satellite observation. It's useful for assessing things like heat transport, important uh, for predicting climate variation. Um, there's uh, more details in the paper. On the bottom there, there is a link. Son Wall et al. Uh, 2019. The next example is the use of a uh, neural network, trained nonlinear ensemble mean to improve global wind and wind wave forecasting. Um, EM stand for in that maps in the map stand for standard ensemble mean and uh, NN stand for neural network nonlinear ensemble mean. The red is over estimation and blue is underestimation compared to altimetry observations. You can learn more again uh, from this, uh, this <coughs> last year paper by Campus CL 2020. And um, the next one is to address the need for the beach gurus um, for safety uh, reason um, and that is is to is to detect the rip current through the coastal imagery and this is used it's it's again a partnership between the our agency and scientists from um, academia uh, in this case here university of santa cruz and uh, uh, the the machine learning that was trained here is a convolutional neural network uh, to detect rip current and those images that collected in the, in the beach. And um, this is to support a uh, rip current forecast model. Again, the, there is a, a recent paper that was published this year by the Selva Yal uh, for more details. This is an example of uh, automated side scan sonar contact detection for safety of, of navigation surveys. It's an innovative uh, uh, image processing and machine learning technique designed to reduce the number of false alarms. This automated technique are directly applicable to port security preparations. Um, uh, so we are able to get the dimensions and probability that's say with, with each contact, as you can see in the and the one in the slides in the bottom, or the figure in the uh, bottom left, uh, right and left. A major challenge of coral reef monitoring is the huge data processing when we do 300 and 500 sites per year. Uh, given the scale at which uh, we, we work and the increasing threat to a reef fish, or sorry, reef, uh, coral reef, reefs, we are placing increasing emphasis on imagery to reduce operational complexity and increase scope, scale, uh, and scale. But this necessitates development of uh, artificial intelligence machine learning tools to extract data from all the new imagery. Coral reef, so this is again collaboration between uh, agency and um, uh, and University of California Santa, San Diego um, uh, that developed the CoralNet tool um, that is an online software package that automate anal analysis of benthic photo quadrants. This open access software is uh, widely used by reef scientists and manager. It has the ability to generate fully automated or uh, semi-automated annotations of coral reef. 
The next one is uh, automated side scan, uh, or this is this one is more of a, uh, sorry. This is the image image in flow cytobots, um, uh, uh, and it's an in situ automated uh, submersible flow cytometer that generate image images of particles taken from the aquatic environment and capture in situ images of phytoplankton. Again, this is a collaboration between uh, Integrated Ocean Observing System, uh, Regional Partners, South uh, Central uh, California Ocean Observing System, and Axiom Data Science. Um, they developed the pipeline to improve the accuracy of phytoplankton species classification and, sub and submit uh, submit uh, the image flow site about data to inform uh, about harmful algal bloom in a publicly accessible web portal. And so it applies a machine learning technique uh, on the streaming data in the cloud environment uh, that can increase the efficiency and accuracy of data managers in the public, for data managers public. Again, there is a links there uh, if you want to learn more about this um, project the next one is application to fisheries data uh, to, this is the case for uh, um, a scallop survey uh, done by habcam uh, this is the sixth generation of habcam deployed on remus 600 auv and it collects a large amount of data it's about the the the, the habitat or the, the habcam Bentic survey um, from the Northeast Fishery Science Center in Woods Hall collect about 5 million image pairs per year. Uh, so manual annotation of sea scallop and fish uh, from approximately 2% of the images are used to provide estimate for stock assessment and management. So kind of this is uh, the application of uh, artificial intelligence here is, uh, is a convolutional neural network uh, CNN uh, uh, that was uh, uh, deployed on a Viami software toolkit uh, uh, and it annotates the full image data but also detect additional species target and reduce manual annotator load. Uh, in other words, most of these uh, computers, computer vision um, applications are uh, the objective really most of them is to to reduce the time of processing, but to increase the accuracy and precision um, of, of, uh, of, the, of the detection of classification of the targets or the objects. Another example I'll show you is the AU fishing uh, example here. This is the dynamic prediction system for illegal, unreported, and unregulated activities in the Pacific. Uh, the objective here is the, uh, to use the machine learning to, to identify a nefarious vessel behavior across the Pacific as a function of suspicious um, AIS disabling, unauthorized transshipment and overlap with protected or vulnerable shark and tuna species. So the benefit here is to, to provide low enforcement uh, um, uh, with data that need to um, um, to look at uh, at and uh, and uh, fishing activities. Again, there is a link down there if you want to learn more about uh, some of these applications. The last one is um, uh, is trying to what you're trying to do with this one is during the surveys that we have in Northeast Fisheries Science Center for uh, bottom trough surveys, we try collect, to collect imagery and uh, uh, data to build a ground fish image library to develop test in advance the application of machine learning algorithms in support of the fishery electronic monitoring program. Um, I think uh, some of my colleagues from NOAA uh, presented or are going to present on these applications for electronic monitoring. Then finally, I want to um, talk a little bit to open some uh, challenges that we are facing with uh, advancing AI. 
uh, in our agency. And uh, as as I showed you, those those projects or those applications are are uh, are very small. Uh, and those are, and then the question is, uh, you know, they are localized and not like everything is shared uh, resources, but uh, they are uh, specifically for for specific data set or data type. Now, when you talk about transitioning this all applications to operation, um, that's something that of a challenge to to um, agencies. So organizations so we what i would like to do here is more of giving you a few options that we are thinking about uh, we are this is still work in progress and the question there is what cyber infrastructure is needed to advance ai in 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 our organization or your organization uh, the option option one uh, uh, would be to to make a centralized resource management. Uh, of course, there is pros and cons on that, uh, doing that. The pros can have more resources in one network centralized and centralized maintenance. And then uh, the, the cons there is that when everyone wants to have a space in there for himself, then they, it will generate some conflict um, or ma conflict may arise on task scheduling and work prioritization. And uh, Option is decentralized resource and management. Um, again, there is pros and cons. I will let you read through them. And um, the last one is a hybrid between the two. And so this is percentage of resource can be allocated. Um, again, you can read through them and we can have a discussion, panel discussion. With that, I would like to finish with a few announcements. Uh, one is the NOAA the first one is the NOAA workshop on leveraging AI in environmental sciences. Uh, this is the third one. It will be hosted at the NOAA Center for Artificial Intelligence in Boulder, Colorado during September 13, 17 of this year. If you are, you like skiing, this is the perfect time to be in, Bo in Boulder, Colorado. The second one is uh, the GPU hackathons. This is a uh, um, a collaboration between uh, NOAA and NVIDIA and um, and this is to run AI hackathon uh, uh, on NVIDIA uh, uh, cyber infrastructure and this this event will is will be this year August 23rd 29 38th and September 1st basically two weeks first week to set up the the the, the teams and uh, and then uh, do some applications and uh, testing the data and then algorithms and then the second week is really doing the work this is a hands-on really a very good opportunity for someone who have already a team and they would like to train and test some of of their applications into uh, multi GPUs and NVIDIA provide basically the uh, there is mentors that help you set up the system and get into the NVIDIA systems. Um, I did one last year. I hosted one team uh, and uh, we had really a good time testing uh, some algorithms and training them on, on multi-GPUs, basically testing them in how they work and how they perform in, in multi-GPUs. So I will uh, encourage everyone to, to look at this one or both of them. Thank you very much. And if you have any question, happy to answer. And thank you. Have a good day. Bye bye. Thanks very much, Hassan. Thanks for sharing uh, Noah's message. And we note that Noah has published the AI strategy that looks at improving the effectiveness and efficiency of work through the development and use of AI. But Noah seems to have a very strong commitment. The agency seems to have. Can you give us some feeling of how did this commitment come to be? It's from early 2014, we heard that they were investing in this and seemed to have a lot of horses out of the gate and running. What, what was it that brought this to such great attention in NOAA and maybe other agencies can learn from, from your experience? Thank you, Kim. Uh, that's a good question there. Uh, I think that. If you look at how uh, 
address is well let's uh, stay within us uh, there is the private or private sector really it's it's advanced advanced so far uh, you know advancing implementing ai uh, google amazon all these uh, private entities are are going so far but the government agencies like NOAA, you know, to, that that produce the data, and we know the challenges of the data of the data processing. Um, you know, we 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 kind of started, you know, thinking how we can move in the same level as these private, uh, you know, uh, companies, and you know, match exactly what we do in, in terms of data processing. But again, the thing that moved NOAA. To this level of producing these strategies and trying to, you know, to compete is that we have, in a good timing, we have a good leadership. It's all to do with the leadership. So, team uh, Vice Admiral Team Gallaudet came into NOAA and said, "You know what? This is what we are going to do. We are going to move forward with this, uh, you know, a new uh, these emerging technologies. It's not only AI, but you can see we had to." We had to look at all, uh, you know, possibilities. I mean, citizen science came the last one, and we had to edit as well. But first time we we've been focusing on encrode systems, like because because we had a lot of already, we had to figure out what to deal with, that, how to deal with them. The encrode system gliders all these platforms and managed systems. We don't call it unmanaged anymore. We call it encrode because that was something that we have to change. <laughs> But then AI also came into the mix because he was a meteorologist. I mean, sorry, he was he was a meteorologist, but also oceanographer of the Navy. So oceanographer of the Navy coming into NOAA uh, and saying, you know, we have to. And he was an acoustic. He was dealing with acoustic as well. So hydroacoustic, like sonars, all these things. And you know, massive data from acoustics that comes into NOAA and how. To to process those data right now i can tell you i've been wow. in, in survey for many many years many years in surveys doing acoustic but what we take we take only target species from those acoustic data what is the rest of a whole ecosystem that is in that data we didn't know we cannot deal with it we just have like one percent two percent of data processing so so i think uh, answering your question kim is that a leadership is a key in moving things forward when he see that there is a team behind him and supporting him. So you have that team behind there, but if you don't have a leadership, you know, you know, pulling everything forward, it's always been hard to do things in, in any agency. So I think what you, what you saw, Kim, it, it, it was a fascinating journey. And we have a new administrator now, and we have a new, new boss now for NOAA, and he, was, he is fantastic, Rick Springrad. He will again move things again forward. I'm sure that all these emerging technologies are going to flourish as we move forward. So Hassan, it's it's great to hear about that foresight in leadership that was happening in the US, but also your enabling private environment, that enabling environment where there was a lot of skill sets and so on, and the requirement coming through the data. Luckily, innovation has been put forward as a a major push for FAO under the new leadership that we have here under the new Director General. Um, I'm going to turn over to Anton because we're talking more about policy questions and so on. Anton, do you have a, a question, please, for for Hassan? Uh, yeah, maybe because I know Hassan has a good background in uh, in geo data, so maybe um, he can bring some lessons from the geo people, so managing geospatial data. Uh, what would you recommend the AI people that maybe? a few years behind a few months behind maybe um in terms of uh, data storage data sharing and data standards so maybe some quick uh reflection yes thank you thank you anton i think that's a big question of course we are all trying to to wrestle with i mean the, 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 i mean at the end of my of course my presentation was not presented uh, because it maybe was long and we don't have time for that i i uh, I understand it, but I had a lot of examples in there showing all those AI in action. And uh, and I think one of them, well, we're dealing with, with models, with, with very, very sophisticated models, and we have to advance them, geospatial models and all these things. So the, the current situation with, with advancing AI in NOAA 
is to do with the fact that we need a shared infrastructure. We cannot have every office or every program have its own infrastructure or yeah, you know, we have to figure that out. We have to figure out, uh, you know, that uh, first you need to organize your data. Okay, you need standard for that, uh, and we've been developing standard for for different type of data. But also, in other words, we are calling it AI ready data, and we have a whole working group on that right now. Is 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 been you know trying to figure that out, and then since we we establish we're establishing this center or. or of artificial intelligence, it will basically have a centralized, uh, you know, role uh, to make sure training and everything there and then making this data ready. But uh, again, it goes to training data. Where what you are going to do with training data? Where are going to host it? Where are going to put it? And so we have this. The good thing about about Noah is not taking only about AI as just one colon. It's thinking about it horizontally. You are talking about cloud. You are talking about big data in same time as you're talking about AI. So when you are putting all this together, you now you have the cloud ready, you have the big data ready, and then you have AI ready. So that's how it should work. It should have to go horizontally across all these um, uh, all these you know columns, whatever. And so talking about answering your question about standards, yes, there is. Now enough standard for geospatial data that we can we can adopt or ad adapt, but also it comes to uh, when you're running these algorithms on top of this data, you need a power. Okay, now you're talking about power and speed, and so the good thing what we've been doing is uh, uh, partnering with Nvidia, and we're using basically I I ran one Nvidia hackathon last year, and we brought a lot of <laughs> it was how many images from coral reef because we've been trying to figure out coral reef how we can advance the coral reef uh, uh, segmentation and notation and then uh, you know a classification and to do that we had really to use uh, the multi gpu system from nvidia and so we had teams coming all together in one place using a multi multi gpu uh, and uh, you know using all that you know, Singularity, Docker, all kinds of the, the thing that NVIDIA provide you. But also we had mentors from NVIDIA helping us to set all that up. So I'm, what I can say is that you need to partner, uh, this partner to, with, with other private like NVIDIA or Google or Microsoft or ArcGIS or companies or, or uh, you know, all that is going to help enable AI to be implemented in the right way. And without that, I don't think it's easy. And in my in my presentation, I have one slide that can give you a direction how to set up your hackathon within NVIDIA. I mean, it is feasible to do. It's not hard, but I think FAO may probably think about how they can enable and facilitate um, you know, th this work uh, by, by making this partnership with NVIDIA and others, and then creating these hackathons uh, or uh, code sprint, whatever you can call them, but those are going to help enable everybody to come and share and work together. Um, I hope that answer your question, Anton. Thank you very much, Hassan. That, that, that story about getting an AI ready ecosystem of all the parts is, uh, is, is very insightful and very helpful for everyone working in smaller teams. Thank you.